Hi, and welcome to the Titus Ventures channel. This video will show how to use Webpack to bundle React code for Chrome extension development. Webpack is a build tool that bundles your JavaScript code into static assets that your browser can serve for the extension. This allows for all the advantages that Webpack brings, like hot reloading, plugins, and bundling code to run efficiently. If you haven't watched my previous video on getting started with developing Chrome extensions with React, I'd highly recommend watching that first as this is a continuation of that video. All the pertinent links and files will be in the description as well. All right, let's get started. We're going to start off by updating the manifest JSON file. Remember, this is the most important file when developing Chrome extensions as it defines how it is configured and what scripts, files, and permissions it uses. I'm going to change the name of the default pop-up parameter to popup.html from index.html. This is just to avoid conflicting the index.html file in the public folder when we later set up a plugin for Webpack. To install Webpack, let's go to the Webpack webpage at webpack.org. I'm going to go to the documentation section, then guides, then installation. All the documentation is very well written, so please visit the website when needed. I'm going to follow the instructions on the installation guide and run npm install dash dash save dash dev webpack and webpack CLI in my terminal. Next, I'm going to create a config file named webpack.config.js in the root directory of my project and then start editing it in VS Code. I'm going to go back to the webpack documentation, go to concepts, scroll down to the output section and copy the sample code and paste it into the newly created webpack.config file. For the entry parameter, specify the index.js in the source folder. This is where Webpack will start bundling the code. This index.js file is standard for apps created with the create React app script. For the output section, this is the path for the build folder where before, if I was just building with React, it was just the build folder. Now, it will be the dist folder. Update the file name to name.js where any entry file specified in the entry section will be named exactly the same in the output disk folder, but with the .js extension since the entry file doesn't have to be a JS file. Now I'm going to open my packages.json and update the script section to use webpack. Update the build command to webpack-config webpack.config.js. Then I'm going to run npm run build in my terminal. This is going to use Webpack to bundle the React code into the disk folder using the configuration I've defined in the webpack.config.js file. Notice that I got some errors from the build process. The first one says the mode option has not been set and Webpack will default to production. That's fine as I will account for this later in the video. The second error basically says that Webpack can't parse JSX and that Webpack needs a loader to process the index.js file. A loader is something that can be installed into Webpack to parse code with JSX or TypeScript, etc. into plain JavaScript and JSON. So let's first configure Webpack to tell it what loaders it needs. I'm going to paste in the following code and explain what it means. This test parameter tells Webpack what type of files in the extension should use this loader, and I want to exclude files from the node modules directory. The loader itself is called Babel Loader, which transpiles React JSX into plain JavaScript that Webpack Builder can understand. Here is the options parameter needed for Babel. I'm going to save this file and run npm install dash dash save dev, Babel Loader, Babel Core, Babel Preset ENV, and Babel Preset React in my terminal. Now I'm going to try building the extension with Webpack again. You can see that there are still some errors to handle. These errors are saying that CSS and SVG files can't be parsed by Webpack. This is where plugins come in. I will need to go to the plugins page on the Webpack website and find the mini CSS extract plugin and SVG URL loader. Here is the mini CSS extract plugin. And then the SVG URL loader can be found here as a third-party plugin recommended by Webpack. I will include a link in the description below. I'm going to open up my terminal and run npm install dash dash save dev mini CSS extract plugin and SVG URL loader. Once these have been installed, I'll need to update my config file. I'm just going to copy and paste some code to configure the plugins. The entire Webpack config file we posted on GitHub and linked in the description for reference.
All right, I can save that and rebuild the extension. Awesome, the build finished without any errors. Now I can see that the disk folder has been generated in my project's root directory and my React extension has been successfully bundled with Webpack. But if I open up the disk folder, I notice that the manifest JSON file is missing, as is the popup.html file that is needed for rendering the popup when the extension icon is clicked in the browser. To accommodate for this, I need the HTML Webpack plugin, and its purpose is to simplify HTML file creation when building with Webpack. I'm going to go to the plugins page again and search for HTML Webpack plugin. Following the installation command, I'll run npm install dash dash save dev HTML Webpack plugin and then add the following code into the config file. Require the plugin and then for the template parameter, specify the index.html file in the public folder. And then for the file name, specify popup.html. A popup.html file will be generated using the index.html file as a template in the disk directory at build time. Let's save the file and rebuild again. Now I can see the popup.html file show in the disk folder and it mirrors the index.html file in the public folder. Now to get the manifest JSON file into the disk folder, I need one final plugin called copy webpack plugin. Its purpose is to copy files inside of a specific directory into the output disk folder. In our case, we want to copy all the files in the public folder into the output disk folder that defines our extension. This will include copying the manifest JSON file. So once again, I'm going to go to the plugins page and install it. I'm going to update my webpack config file by requiring the plugin and specifying that I want all the files from the public folder to be copied into the disk output folder. Save that and rebuild. I can now see all the files from the public folder were copied into the disk folder including the important manifest JSON file. Now I can load the extension into the browser to see that everything works. I'll go to the Manage Extensions page in Chrome, make sure the developer mode is on, click on Load Unpacked, and upload the disk folder. I'm going to pin the extension to my browser window and click the icon to open up the pop-up. I can see that the app is rendering correctly. The last thing I'll show is how to hot reload the app so that a new disk folder will be automatically built every time Webpack detects a change in the code. I'm going to copy the Webpack config file to a new file and name it webpack.dev.js. I'm going to add a couple parameters. Mode will be set to development for this dev file and dev tool will be set to inline source map. This is to make sure code bundled during development is as close to a production build as possible. Lastly, I'm going to update my package.json to include a dev script, typing in webpack-watch-config webpack.dev.js. Now, when I'm developing, I will run npm run dev, and if I'm building for production, I will run npm run build. Let's check out the hot reload functionality. I'm going to edit this message here in the extension. I'm going to change it to hello world, save the file, and Webpack will automatically detect that and build a new disk folder. I can just open up the Chrome extension again and see the changes. This is super convenient. That's it for this video. Let me know if you enjoyed it in the comments below and subscribe for more content related to developing Chrome extensions. There will be more to come with tutorial videos and various important things to know with Manifest V3. Thanks for watching.